So Rod from VMN here. This is my work in progress um, milling machine, old milling machine here, uh, using Linux CNC and EtherCAT motors. So um, these are uh, Artelligent, um, eight Newton meters, NEMA 34, closed loop step motors driven by EtherCAT. Um, so this machine was previously once set up to be CNC in a very dodgy way and the only thing left of that installation is these two pieces here. Um, I tried to run an EMA 24 here but um, physically the intelligent drives that I want I, I'm using just didn't like their smaller drives so so we'll have a look at that. Um, we've got ball screws everywhere. Um, this one here I just painted yesterday you just have to um, bolt this down which protects that um, protects that little um, um, home sensor there um, brackets here here and here for our limit switch has just got to tighten up when it's in final position um, back in here I've got a um, top limit switch for the z-axis and um, around here I've got um, here I've got um, mist coolant here um, I've got another unit coming this is just something I had it's designed for a saw so um, whilst I could have used that it's a little bit awkward to mount on a milling machine so um, that's driven by air down here I decided it'd be nice to have a um, a regulator there to adjust the pressure. Um, the solenoid here is designed, it's a, um, a three-way valve so it's designed to drive a, um, a, it's designed to drive a pneumatic cylinder and um, I've got one outlet turned off and the other one oh, it's got a needle valve on it which we can adjust as has the, um, the input here. So then around here we've got um, a three-phase motor and something I already had was a five and a half kilowatt um, three-phase VFD and currently it's going up to a little control up here um, to um, a hand control but the next stage once I've got everything working is I can run it and adjust the speed manually in the next stage will be to see if we can get it talking via RS-485 to the VFD. In the case here, um, I've got a fair bit of stuff, a little um, touch screen, 15 inch touch screen as well as a little, um, and they're no longer made unfortunately, Odroid H2 Plus, which is embedded in here, um, and Linux CNC here. Um, very simple controls deliberately. Um, power switch for the, for the computer but it's not necess really necessary uh, a run stop and a pause resume button and emergency stop um, I'm using a safety switch in this so rather than use Link CNC to trigger the safety switch to reset it I've elected to go with a um, around here out of the road a reset button here so pressing that will um, enable the e-stop so, um, so then here I've got um, a PowerPoint. I've just got to get some um, better bolts here, but, but um, basically I've got a PowerPoint there for coolant. And um, down here, unfortunately where, where we are here, um, we didn't have um, a five, five and we didn't have a neutral wire in the power points on this side of the building so I've had to bring um, 240 volt power in here because I couldn't pick it up from the three phase. Um, around the back um, we have the safety switch, 24 volt power supply, a couple of relays for the safety relay, um, um, a 64 volt AC, 65 volt AC custom made toroid power supply 
and that goes down and feeds the ethercat motors which are capable of handling 80 volts AC. So um, there's a three phase breaker here and there's an auxiliary port here which is used to um, turn the fan on and off. Um, we don't need to disable these, I've still got a little bit of wiring to do here, I'm missing a connector here, but once I put that in, what I want to do is um, uh, trigger an e-stop back into one of these inputs here, and um, that will disable the motors but keep holding torque in place. Um, of course, um, always with any build, there's an um, IEC connector here for um, power filtering. Um, and um, up here, I had this in my box of tricks as a 40 amp hour, 40 amp MOSFET um, relay, so um, AC relay, so that's what triggers the coolant pump. And down here is the um, intelligent, intelligent um, 16 input, 16 output um, IO module. And this thing here is not part of that, but that comes from MESA, and it's a, a COM X2. So there's two common blocks of 12 um, connectors here. So one side of it I've got connected to plus 24 volts, and the other side I've got minus 24 volts. And in the cabinet, very, very full, there's another one in here. So, um, so the ethernet comes in, um, here comes around here and plugs into the input here on on drive zero and then from there it's daisy chain drive zero drive one up daisy train drive two and out to the IO connector so I've got a lot of wiring still to do here um, and a lot of tidying up to do but it, um, I just um, have had some trouble there because it's such a tight enclosure. I originally wanted to get a 500 millimetre by 500 millimetre enclosure and they didn't have any in stock so I ended up with a 400 by 400 so there's no room for any um, any nice um, conduit or anything to tidy it up. I will say this is substandard design and not what I had intended. Um, I assumed that this was a, um, being a square enclosure, that the backing board was square, but it's not. And I laid it out on the assumption that this would be the top, so the drives were up high and allow to um, radiate heat and allow airflow to go through here. But when I took this board from home and came back here once the cabinet was on the machine, I, fa <laughs> I found that. Uh, it wasn't square and I had to lay it out this side and I wasn't going to rearrange it. So at that point I decided to put a decent fan in here. So it's got an industrial quality um, 240 volt fan. And I've got that triggered by e-stop. Um, so the remaining IO to do is the three is e-stop the three drives um, and also um, I need to bring uh, input from the um, from the safety relay back into Linux CNC. So if we just go up here and we'll go around to our safety reset, I'll just make sure the e stops triggered. I'll trigger the safety relay here and um, we should see something come into action here. So let's see. So yep. Um, I won't go into the safety relay at this point in time, but the long and the short of it is that there's um, a lot of fail stuff, fail safe stuff here, um, and there's three contactors here which are internal, which have all come on. One of those triggers the um, three phase power to the spindle, so if we hit E stop, we'll lose power to the spindle, um, and then um, all the rest of this. Um, the e-stops, um, finally there's some safety switch that trigger and also from these relays there should be an output um, to um, tell Linux CNC that e-stop is enabled and um, I've still got to wire in and they're labelled here um, the run stop pause resume buttons in the front that'll take quite a bit of hell trickery but it should be pretty cool when it's done I have actually done it once before so get that running. Um, 
so there you have it. Um, we we should be able to. Um, I'm missing some home switches yet, so I think I've just got to. Um, I'll just move over this this to the end of travel. Somewhere about there, we'll say, and um, drive one. I just want to move it. I um, know oh it's all right. So if I hit home all, um, one of them has a home switch, and that's this axis here. It's got the little blue one down there, so it's moving towards the. And that's a home offset to take it right back to the zero position, which I wanted to have in this um, this corner here. So that's X0, Y0. Um, the pendant or the Z axis is a go as well. Um, and I'll just turn on the mist at flood just to prove the point. And over here, we've got a little um, bilge pump that came with the machine which is probably not anywhere near big enough, hence using that 240 volt thing there. It's a 450 gallon per hour um, build pump. And also we should have the um, mister running at this point, which I've jammed in here. So, <laughs> so we'll just move that off. Um, Just pause the video while I work this.